contrary to popular opinion, <coughs> we are not an unsighted only shooting program. But we do stress that the kinesthetic alignment, the unsighted fire, full extension in and parallel with our line of sight under the most probable situations, most probable distances, most probable combat accurate target area, the high center chest, is going to work for the overwhelming majority of people who take this course. From new shooters to experienced shooters, doesn't really matter. Both eyes open, focused on the threat. That's how we start the fight, when we recognize the need to use our gun. We go back down, we get the gun, we drive the gun out along our line of sight, and it magically ends up aligned as our finger would be or any other tool that we use. Human animals can integrate with tools really, really well, and we can point in and parallel with our line of sight really well. Those two things combine to put the bore line in and parallel with our line of sight, and at that 6 to 10 to 15 foot range, people do not have a hard time getting good high center chest hits. In a dynamic environment where the target's moving, we can track that motion linearly with our eyes, keep the gun in and parallel with our line of sight, we lose the ability to do that if we focus on the front sight. If we focus on the front sight, we lose the natural human heuristic for tracking linear motion. If that target does happen to be moving or even just shifting, we miss it. We're focused on the front sight, and we miss the target. So sighted fire is great for shooting tight groups on pieces of paper, hitting steel, hitting under extreme precision situations, but not the general default for defensive shooting. The fundamentals of defensive shooting are extend, touch, and press. The fundamentals of target shooting come into play when we have a higher need for precision. Sights are put on a gun for precision in order to enhance our ability to control deviation, to make that cone that represents all the places the bullet could go smaller. We don't need that high of a level of precision for most defensive shooting. We see plenty of people who have never been trained use firearms successfully for interpersonal defense or offense. We see plenty of people use techniques that are completely untrained. In other words, people who have been taught to shoot in a target shooting position in a dash camera video going like that, fully extending the gun in parallel with their line of sight and getting hit, clearly with their eyes focused on the threat. But when we need to be more precise, obviously we want to use the sights to do that. Sight alignment is the relationship between the front sight and the rear sight. What we're looking for is even across the top, equal amounts of light on either side. That notch and blade setup on a pistol is the best way for us to gain the most precision that we can out of that pistol. Once we start screwing with that, we start to lose our ability to be as precise. Now, the closer the relationship between the size of the blade and the size of the notch, in other words, the size of the front sight and the size of the opening in the rear sight, the more precise we can be. But also, the less light we have on either side here to use to line these up, the harder it is to do. And the higher contrast we need between the color of the sights and the color of the target. So on a sunny day against a white or gray or tan piece of paper, you can use your target sights all day long, white piece of steel, whatever it is. But when we get into a dynamic situation with maybe a black shirt in a dark environment and dark sights, it's harder to get that kind of alignment if we don't have a fair amount of space on either side of that sight. So optimally, what we want is the notch and blade setup, but with a fair amount of difference between the size of the front sight as it appears to us at extension and the size of the gap or the notch in the rear sight. That's going to allow us to get that even across the top, equal <clears throat> amounts of light on either side kind of relationship. Now enhancing that, in other words not changing it, not making it a circle or an octagon or a wedge and any of that, but enhancing that by making the front sight brighter in some way, putting a circle on it, painting it highly reflective color, whatever, making the front sight easier to focus on, awesome. Go for it. Do it all day long. Doesn't interfere with the notch and blade setup. Giving yourself three dots to align as some kind of intermediate indication that your sights are aligned. Now, of course, when we do that, this circle might be a little closer to that circle or a little closer to that circle. So there might be some inherent deviation, but it's still going to be pretty good. It's still going to help us to align the gun. Not necessary for the normal plausible distances on the high center chest for multiple shots, but 
We want to line up on something maybe a little bit further away, outside of our ability to do normal kinesthetic alignment. <clears throat> cool. Three dots will work. Um, dot inside of a tray, of course, is popular from some manufacturers. Dot with dashes on the side. Dot on top of a post. Once we get to this, now we start to, we're not focusing anymore on those, those wings of the rear sight. Not as happy with the dot on a post, but it's some level of indication. Dot on top of a dot. No straight edges, even harder to get aligned well, but again, it's just an intermediate piece. My suggestion would be that if you're going to do anything on the sights other than just enhance the visibility of the front sight, it would be to have something out here and something out here. Whether that's the tray, or dashes, or other circles, uh, maybe smaller circles on the side and bigger circles on the front, whatever, um, that's an option. Night sights, not a big fan. Um, went through a stage where, okay, you've got to have night sights, got to have night sights. Uh, going into the late 90s, got to do a night, you know, well, let's just put a, a night sight on the front dot. Uh, the, sorry, in the dot on the front sight. At the end of the day, only if you are in complete darkness or close to it, and yet there's enough light to identify the bad guy as a threat, and there's enough contrast for you to use your sights on that bad guy, would self-luminescent night sights really help you? And that's an incredibly small uh, situation, right? It's really small, narrow pie of the possible. And it also, by the way, has to be a situation where you need to use your sights in the first place. So all of a sudden, you've got this small percentage of a small percentage where night sights will really help. So uh, if you got the extra hundred bucks, throw them on there but I wouldn't chase or compromise any other aspect of your sighting system or your firearm just to have that. I don't think it offers that big an advantage. So that's sight alignment, right? That's just the relationship between the front and rear sight. The sight picture, then, is the relationship between your sight alignment and the thing you're trying to hit. So I'm trying to hit inside of this kind of circle. That's what I want it to look like. Now, because that circle is so big, I wouldn't even need my sights, right? Generally speaking, if that's going to be the size of the target, I probably don't need the level of precision being afforded to me by sight alignment, sight picture. But let's say the target requires more precision. Now, I want to take that front sight and cover up part of it, that thing I'm trying to shoot. And that's good sight alignment sight picture. That's the kind of sight alignment sight picture that's going to give you the greatest usefulness over your plausible defensive distance with your pistol. That's whatever you want to call it. Target hold, uh, front sight hold, whatever you want to do. This thing is 6 o'clock hold, or some people call it combat hold. Um, putting the target on top of your front sight. I really see that more as a uh, caveat of people who would suggest, would have suggested, especially in the past, that you need to have perfect sight alignment, sight picture every time you're going to shoot, kind of dealing with the reality of people saying, well, aren't we going to be focused on the threat, or shouldn't we be looking at the threat, or don't we want to be focused on the threat, or gee, it seems like we were focused on the threat. Yeah, you are. We have binocular vision, and, and human animals are really good at focusing on something and sticking their hand or finger out in between, and you're still able to see that thing. So I can, I can look over here at Matt, put my hand out here, and I can still see Matt even though my hand is in my line of sight. I don't need to have my hand below my line of sight in order to see Matt. This is just like a, a failure to really accept the, the vis vision capability and the neurology of the human animal and rationalize all that away. And also to insinuate that you're going to be able to look at a target and the front sight at the same time. Well, you can't do that. You're not going to look at the front sight and the target at the same time. You can only focus on one. So because you have to pick one, you may as well do this. This is what is natural for the human animal, and now I can have both eyes open and focus on the target and see it very clearly, or I can close one eye and focus on the front sight and see it very clearly and know that it is superimposed over the target. So we'd much rather have ourselves set up like this. The other thing that happens here is that we've got a disparity now between the bore line and the sight line that's even greater. Because now I'm taking the bore line and I'm wanting it to shoot above 
that line of the site so that the thing that is resting on top of the site in my visual field, if this is now my eye, the thing that's resting on top of the site in my visual field, if that's the rear sight, is now being shot like angled up. So obviously that then creates an, an arc and a growing disparity between my line of sight and the actual bore line, which is worse than this here. All right, pistol rounds for, for practical purposes across our defensive shooting distances are going to shoot relatively flat and then just drop off like rocks. Well, on that flat part, which is where we're going to use a pistol for defensive purposes, especially in, in a counter ambush kind of situation, we want to be spot on. We don't want to be doing this kind of thing.